Okay, so here's a question. You just got caught for a double murder or just kind of made your dope case. Are you gonna snitch? Uh, yeah, I confess, father, I confess. Cause I've been living wrong. I know you know, that's a question, believe it or not, that I, uh, I will have with my homies sometimes. We're just through this shit. And I tell me, hey, homie, let me ask you something. Uh, if you were looking at fucking double life in prison, you know, you're 30 years old or where I'm talking to. And, and, uh, they said, hey, uh, you drop dime on this cat or you tell me, uh, where I can get some dope. Are you gonna snitch? And 9, 10, 10, 10, I get right away like, I nah, fuck that home Charlie. I, I look at him and I said, fuck you, more gangster than me, homie, because I'm gonna be straight up. I'm gonna think about it, you know? And then after I start telling him that, we're like, oh, well, yeah, you know, I would think about it because you are gonna think about it. If any guy just sits here and tells you off the back, he's looking at fucking double life. Uh, for a murder, for a dope, whatever it is, you're looking at, you will never walk out of prison, but if I fucking point the finger at this motherfucker, I may just get out? Guess what? You're gonna think about it, man. And if you're gonna sit here and just say, Charlie Holmes, I'm too down, what you I pretty much say that's bullshit. I've been there, I know what it takes, and that's why now, I don't put myself in that position. Now, if somebody really asks me, hey, Gil, would you fucking stitch on somebody? Like I said, I don't know. And that's why I'm not slanging dope. And that's why I'm not out there fucking breaking the law because I'm not willing to pay that price anymore. When I was a young kid and didn't know any better, I would probably say, no, I wouldn't snitch on anybody. And I've been put in those positions and I didn't snitch. But when people just ask you that and your first reaction or somebody just says, Charlie, no, off the back without even thinking about it, they're full of shit. That is such a big package to take on that quick that if you just flat out said no i won't most likely you're just talking to your homies or you're talking to some bottles you may be scared of so you're saying that but i'm saying as a conversation from one man to another if somebody sits there and tells me hey you might get out if you fucking snitch on these guys guess what as a man as somebody just trying to survive it's in our nature to survive you're gonna fucking think about it and if somebody just sits there and says no they're full of shit they're full of shit i'm gonna read you off the list and this is, uh, I don't know, like five, seven guys. And these are guys that between them all probably have, I don't know, 100 bodies, 200 bodies. These are guys who would kill you with no hesitation and, uh, and probably go home and sleep at night like it's no big deal. We got Sammy the Bull, who snitched around 81. He was a mobster. We got ten to uh, Ken Tokyo Joe in the 80s. Same thing. He was a mobster. He snitched. Frank Lucas, uh, I want to say that they made that movie on Frank Lucas. I don't know if it was American Gangster. 75, motherfucker snitched. Henry Hill, mobster, snitched. Alpo in the 80s, I was in the East Coast, snitched. Uh, Nicky Barnes, 89, another killer, snitched. Uh, the Flores twins out of Chicago, who snitched right now on Chapo Guzman, Guzman, is another snitch. These are all guys who at their heyday were some of the biggest killers some of the most cold-blooded motherfuckers you would ever meet. And this was back in the days when the, the game was uh, allegedly more solid than it is now. And they were snitching, man. People have been snitching since the beginning of fucking time. Why? Because not everybody's willing to pay the price for something they did. And I know I'll hear, oh, but they're punk-ass bitches. Oh, but this. I don't really give a fuck what they are. All I know is a lot of those motherfuckers snitched and they got out. Which tells me... That the majority of people who get caught will think about it. They may not do it, but they will think about it. So when somebody asks you, will you snitch? The answer is, I don't know. I hope not. But the answer really should be is, I won't put myself in that position to fucking find out. Because that's not a price I'm willing to pay. My first advice to anyone who's living that gangster life and may even put themselves in a situation where they're not, I mean, not even looking at life, looking at a year, looking at six months, looking at whatever time, man. What, what I realized is that a lot of these youngsters don't know, man. And even if you're not out there breaking the law, the first thing you do, if the cops get you in a place where they're questioning you, the first thing you do, it's like a safe word. It's like kryptonite to the police. Is you say, if you're gonna arrest me, arrest me and get me a lawyer. I got nothing to say. These cops will fucking, their face expressions with their happiness and trying to help you will change into upset. They will back the fuck up from you and they're out of the room, man. That's the magical word, guys. If you get into any even a DUI and they're arresting you, listen, I've got nothing to say. Get me a lawyer and that's it, brother. And they will back the fuck away from you. Anyhow, I have been put in a position where if I snitched, I would have got out. 
And, and that was when I was 16 years old. When I caught my first case that I went to the Youth Authority. It was uh, October 19th, 1991. I got busted for, uh, for shooting at some enemigas in the daytime. And then I caught another case the same for that. And the same day I got arrested actually later on that night for, uh, for busting at the cops and some enemies. Well, when I got arrested, it was me and uh, three of my homies. One that was sitting behind me got released right away. And the other two were adults. I was 16. They were, well, I think one was 19 and one was like 21 or 22. Well, those guys were looking at a 15 of life for attempted murder of the police officer. And I had two different cases. And they didn't quite know if I was going to be tried as an adult or as a juvenile. Luckily, back then, I don't think they had passed the law to put you as, a, as an adult. I think that came more like around 90. 495 they passed the law now when you I think could have been 13 years old and they still charge you as an adult and that would have most likely happened to me but like I said luckily it did not so what happened in my case was they tried to get me to fucking snitch I pretty much told them go fuck off get me a lawyer they walked out of the room uh, I fought the case for a few months my homies were still in the county now they were offering them like 20 something 25 years straight instead of the 15 with the l uh, I, I was telling people, I was telling them, don't take anything, homie. Don't take it. I didn't sit there and just say, oh, oh, put it on me. No, no, no. It, it don't work like that, homie. It just, don't say shit. Write it out and then see what happens. Well, everybody wrote it out. The day I was found guilty uh, of the shooting, the earlier shooting, the cop shooting, nothing was ever, nothing was ever proved. Uh, the day I was found guilty, they let my two older homies out. Them fools went free and did zero time on that case. That was the day I think that I pretty much made my bones in my hood. You know, you could be out there putting in work, you could be out there doing this and that, but at that age, you're 16, you're moving up in the ranks, you got you caught a deep case, you had homies that were looking at life, and you fucking held your own and did your time. And, that, and that's what I did. And um, I came out, same thing, happened a couple more times, got busted again. I never, I at that time never had the urge to snitch anybody, never really fucking thought about it as much. I thought this is how the game was, but around me, there was a lot of people snitching, man. I was, I was in YA with uh, all kinds of cats, and uh, a lot of those cats, fools fucking were ratting on them, whether they were their enemies, whether they were their, uh, their crime partners, motherfuckers were snitching because people just weren't willing to pay that price. You gotta remember, man, a lot of you guys are out there running the streets, Playing gangster, homeboy. And that's what I call it. Playing gangster. But it ain't playing anymore once they got you locked up in that box. And you're looking at consecutive fucking life sentences, man. Then you start looking around and say, wait a minute, dude. Do, do I really want to be here for the rest of my fucking life? Uh, is me telling this guy going to set me free? And that's what people break, man. Everybody has a breaking point. Don't don't sit there and think that, uh, that everybody's just fucking hard as fuck. And uh, just don't give a fuck. There is very few of those people man and those people are the ones that stay locked up and don't ever come out but the majority of people they're fucking human beings man and human beings will break so before you go out there and start uh thinking you're gonna rob somebody thinking you're gonna fucking do some shit legal with somebody and you're doing it with somebody else you better think twice about who you're doing it with and what you're doing and you better Think about the consequences, guys, because once they break you off 20, 30 years, man, you got nowhere, nowhere to go. You're fucked, man. You know, now you're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, reform in the in the penal system and people are getting a uh, pardon, getting out. Well, it's going to be great to see if these guys come out and actually do something with their lives. Because if these guys are coming out and uh, doing the same old shit, guess what? It's going to burn it for everybody behind them trying to get out. I think they had a guy out here in uh, Torrance. He was a black cat. He just got out of doing 17 years. In 2017, uh, some brawl happened. This fool pulls out a strap, kills like three and shoots four, or kills four and shoots three, one or the other. And uh, I can guarantee you in the next uh, elections when it comes to any kind of uh, pro uh, propositions to uh, relieve people who have been in prison for a long time, his name's going to come up, man. It's it's not like you, you do one thing and it doesn't affect everybody else. The reason so many laws are getting put into place is because that people keep burning the spot Keep, people keep fucking up, and then they start tying the shit up, tying the shit up, and at the end, we're the ones complaining. Well, why you guys got these laws going? Why you guys doing? It's because we're fucking up, homie. Chapo's case right now, the Sinaloa cartel one, that guy's got so many people snitching on him. They're, they're falling over each other to be the first ones to try to get him convicted so they get a deal. And uh, if you watched any of the, which are great episodes on Netflix, those Narcos ones, start from, uh, start from the Pablo Escobar one, go to the Mexico one, 
yeah, I'm sure they, they changed the story a little bit. But for the most part, the characters and everything are dead on, man. And uh, most of those characters end up snitching on each other, man. Everybody ends up talking, man. The feds are breaking. Like I said, people, you only get one shot at life out here, right? You only get one shot at life. And when that's been taken from you and somebody's waving that little fucking character, and, hey, you fucking tell me something, I'm going to let you go free. Guess what? You will look at life quite a bit different, man. You know, so take this as a warning. Snitching is something that has been going on since the beginning of time. And it's only getting worse, man. People are telling more and more often. And it's it's almost like not a big deal. So if you think you're going to be a gangster, you think you're going to be a dope dealer, you think you're going to fucking just push your weight and not get snitched on, eh, you better think again, homeboy. Times have changed. The world has changed. That's why I'm in your living room. That's why I'm at your job site. Look at this shit. There's computers everywhere. Everybody's listening to everything. Everything you say... Everything you text is being recorded somewhere by someone. It doesn't mean that they're on you specifically, but what the feds are doing is they're taking all this stuff, they're pretty much writing a book on you, and that way, when it comes time that you do anything or something goes on, click this guy's name, put it up, boom. Dude, they're showing a spreadsheet of all the websites you've been on, uh, everybody you've talked to, everybody you've tagged, every fucking phone call you made, every posting you made on Instagram. I mean, everything you do, brother, you go, you go to, you go to the gym. I, I'm, I'm listening to my Pandora. I'm at the gym. It says, "Hey, do you want to listen to gym music?" Um, I go to a restaurant. Hey, can you rate this restaurant? Um, I'm at Home Depot. Hey, how do you like Home Depot? You know, anything that you click on there, you think it's coincidental? You start getting a uh, advertisement for it? No, man. It's a different world. This world is all being recorded. This world, is, it, it, there's a record of everything that we're doing. So this is probably the worst time in America to be a, to be a criminal, to just be a criminal. I mean, straight up, today in America, the chances of you getting caught are very high. So only because you hear snitches get snitches, yeah, that may be true, but a lot of snitches get out, and that's what they got the care for. They're trying to get the fuck out of jail. My advice to you, don't break the law. My advice to you, stay out of jail. My advice to you, get a fucking job, man. Grow the fuck up. You know, you're going to have to follow somebody's rules. Gangsters are always the ones that, I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm going to do what I want. You know, I'm going to run the streets because you don't want no rules. But you don't know that once you go to jail, there's more rules in jail than anywhere fucking else you've been to. You can't eat with this vato. You can't fucking go with this race. You can't use those bathrooms. You can't use those phones. You gotta fucking go to your cell at this time. You gotta be at camp for this time. You gotta show up for child this time. It could be cold as fuck in the yard. It could be hot as fuck in the yard. It's mandatory yard. It's just rules after rules after rules after rules. Well, if you're willing to sit in a box and this is those rules for the next 30 to 40 years, by all means, keep on doing what you're doing. If you're not willing to pay that price, then get the fuck out of the game, get your head out of your ass, and get your life straight, guys. Other than that, guys, I really do appreciate the subscriptions and the comments, man. I do, too. Also, uh, go Rams, baby. Uh, I'll be talking to you guys. Make sure you hit that subscription button and that like button. Later. Uh, yeah, I confess, father, I confess. Cause I've been living wrong.